What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook and welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In this week's video, I'm gonna show you how I completely made over this guest bedroom closet by pulling out all of the old crappy wire shelving and replacing it with an upper and base cabinet, a bunch more shelving and a bunch more closet rod to add a ton of storage to this closet. Also, before we get started with the build, I wanna say a big shout out to AMD, who's the sponsor of this week's video and stick around till later in the video to learn more about the AMD powered laptop I used throughout this project. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the video. If you've been following along with my projects for a while, you'll know that I despise wire shelving. And unfortunately, every single closet in our house is full of this stuff. To make matters worse, in our two guest bedroom closets, which act as our nursery as well as my son's room, there is a ridiculously minimal amount of wire shelving, meaning there's also a ton of wasted space in these closets. With our second kid arriving soon, now felt like the time to finally give these two closets a complete makeover. So my plan was to fill these closets out with a base cabinet with drawers, an upper cabinet with some adjustable shelving, and then four more shelves with some closet rods for hanging clothes. So in case you missed my last video, I recently added a 4x8 Avid CNC to my shop, and I have been anxiously awaiting being able to cut cabinets on this beast of a machine. I've definitely made my share of cabinets in the past using more typical woodworking tools, and I have plenty of videos showing the process of building them that way. But that said, the thought of being able to load up a full sheet of plywood and watch as the CNC cut all of the joinery, shelf pin holes, drawer slide mounting holes, and then finally cut the parts to size was incredibly exciting to me. To design the cabinets, I initially used SketchUp, but then to actually create all of the G-code files to cut the parts on the CNC, I used a CNC cabinetry software called Mosaic. Before actually trying to cut anything, and since this was my first time using G-code generated by Mosaic, I first did a quick air run, cutting above the spoil board just to make sure everything looked right, and luckily it looked perfect so I could load up my first sheet of plywood. I decided to go with Radiata Pine plywood on this build as I plan to paint the outside faces, but honestly I'm not sure if I'd use it again in the future on this type of project. As you can see, most of these sheets had a pretty significant warp to them and the faces looked really rough in some areas. Thankfully, after flipping this first sheet over, my vacuum pump was able to pull the sheet flat to the spoil board and then I could get my first bit, a five millimeter drilling bit, which drilled the drawer slide mounting holes and the adjustable shelf pin holes zeroed out. And after zeroing the bit, I ran the first program, which <laughs> took all of 30 seconds. After that was done, I switched over to a 3 8 of an inch compression bit, which I picked up from Bits Bits. And this bit was the real MVP on this project and was responsible for cutting all of the dados into the cabinet pieces, as well as cutting the parts to size. And this was really the first time I had done any serious cutting on this CNC, and I was blown away at just how quickly it cut through this plywood. So as you can see, this 3 8 of an inch bit was able to easily cut through this 3 quarter of an inch thick plywood in a single pass and the edge quality I was left with was pretty incredible. Now I do need to do something about my dust collection though, as my current setup just can't keep up with the ridiculous volume of dust generated by the CNC. After removing the pieces from the first sheet and vacuuming off the spoil board, I loaded up the second sheet and repeated the process, first drilling the holes, then cutting the dados and profiles. And I repeated the same process on the next two sheets, using a total of four sheets of plywood, and I had all of the cabinet parts cut in about an hour and a half, which is just absolutely crazy to me. And I actually think I spent more time changing bits and vacuuming up the leftover dust than the CNC actually spent cutting, so there's definitely plenty of room for improvement there. After cutting, I could dry fit one of the cabinets, which came together pretty much perfectly. And you can see all of the shelf pin holes for the three adjustable shelves are already drilled in this upper cabinet, and all the dados were nice and tight. Next, I took the dry assembly apart and sanded all of the inside faces of these upper cabinets to 120 grit, since it was a lot easier to sand these pieces prior to assembly. The assembly process went really smoothly and I just added enough glue to help hold everything together without having to deal with a ton of squeeze out. I added the top and bottom panels next, which are housed in a rabbit, and then I screwed the whole thing together through the pre-drilled assembly holes. And I did countersink these holes slightly so that they'd be easier to fill in later, but otherwise <laughs> this was almost as easy as assembling IKEA furniture.
I repeated the same process for the base cabinet, which went together in pretty much the same way, but I realized that one of the customizations I had made to this cabinet in Mosaic hadn't carried over to the G-code. The dados on the inside of the side panels are for the drawer stretchers, which go between each drawer, and I wanted these stretchers flush with the front edge of the cabinet, not recessed. To fix this, I whipped up a quick little jig made out of scraps, and then using a white side pattern bit, also from Bits Bits, I extended this dado to the front edge of the cabinet. And this went super quick, and then I could get the stretchers installed with glue and screws. Plus, I've already figured out how to fix this on future projects, so I won't have to do this again. I repeated the whole process one more time on the second base cabinet, and once that was done, all of the cabinets were assembled, so I could move back to the CNC to cut the drawer parts. I used a quarter inch compression bit for this, as the general rule of thumb here is that you can cut through material twice as thick as the diameter of the bit. So this quarter inch bit could cut through half inch plywood in one pass without wasting material like would have happened if I used a wider bit like the 3 8 inch bit. I loaded up a larger offcut of half inch plywood I've had around the shop, and then I could load up the G-code file into Mach 4, which was running on this AMD-powered Dell Inspiron 14 7000 2-in-1 laptop, and get to cutting. Or so I thought. So somehow the wire inside this dust hose caught on the edge of one of the linear guide rails, causing it to pull on the dust shoe and cause all kinds of issues. Not a huge deal, I just cut off this section of dust hose and figured I could just run it again, and lo and behold, the exact same thing happened when I tried to run the program again. So after a slight meltdown, I reconfigured the location of the hooks above the CNC holding the hose and was able to continue cutting, which went super quick. And as you can see, these drawers use the same type of qualified tenon to join the front, back, and sides, and this makes for a super strong drawer box. I ran another program on a full sheet of half-inch plywood, which cut more of the drawer parts, including the drawer bottoms, and then all of the drawer parts were done. Next, I decided to try a little trick I've seen my buddy Mike Farrington use on his drawer parts and used a half round router bit to ease the top edges of the drawer box parts. And this removes any sharp edges from the top edges of the drawer boxes and it's just a really nice touch. I also used my power feeder to run the parts through quickly and at a consistent speed and this made really quick work of the task. Before assembling the drawers, I sanded the inside faces with 180 grit sandpaper, both to clean them up, but also to give me a little more wiggle room on those qualified tenons, which had a pretty snug fit. Assembling the drawers was simple enough once I figured out how all the parts came together, and the only screws I needed to add were to attach the bottom to the front and back, which were cut shorter to allow some clearance room for the drawer slides. I glued and screwed together all eight drawer boxes and then left them in the clamps for the glue to dry. The only other parts left to cut were the toe kicks, which will clip onto the leveling feet I'm using on the base cabinets, and then the shelves, which will go on the shelf brackets for the closet rods. After cutting these last few parts, I could start the very lengthy finish prep process on these parts by chamfering all of their edges at the router table, again with the assistance of the power feeder, and I also chamfered the edges of the drawer fronts while I was at it. Finally, I sanded the ridiculous number of parts with 80 grit, 120 grit, and finally 180 grit sandpaper. And while I'm sanding, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, AMD, and this AMD-powered Dell Inspiron 14 7000 2-in-1 laptop I've been using in this video. I've been extremely impressed with this laptop's performance so far, with the new AMD Ryzen mobile processor allowing me to run all of the programs I needed for this project simultaneously, including some fairly resource-intensive 3D modeling softwares. The 13 hours of battery life have also allowed me to use the laptop all day without having to be tethered to power, which was really great for working on the go. Another huge plus of this particular laptop is the touchscreen and the screen's ability to fold back, which is called tint mode. And this is something I didn't realize I was missing when doing this type of work, but being able to manipulate the 3D model I was working from, as well as being able to easily give commands to the CNC, made having a touchscreen a big bonus here. All of those features combined with things like a built-in SD card reader, USB-C port, and HDMI port makes this a great choice of a laptop at an awesome price point. If you'd like to learn more about this AMD-powered Dell Inspiron 14 7000 2-in-1 laptop, check out the link in the video description below, and big thanks to AMD for sponsoring this project, and now let's get back to the build. 
Next, I could do a little finish prep work on the cabinets, first filling all of the screw holes with wood filler. After the wood filler dried, I sanded the outside faces of the cabinets up to 180 grit, also breaking all the sharp edges while I was at it. And I didn't worry about the front edges or the insides of the cabinets at this point, as I'd sand those areas after painting. Speaking of which, next I could get to painting, and I ended up going pretty funky on this project and went with this pretty cool shade of purple for these outside faces of the cabinets. And I think this purple really played off the yellow of the pine plywood nicely, plus these cabinets are for kids room closets after all. I used Total Boat's Elixir paint on this project, and this purple color is actually equal parts of their seafoam green, fire red, and flag blue, which I had a ton of on hand, so I decided to do experiment with mixing the colors. I sprayed on two coats of paint, let the paint dry overnight, sanded the paint with 320 grit sandpaper to smooth things out, and then finally rolled on a final coat off camera since it was of course now raining outside. Once the third coat dried, I cleaned up the line between the painted and unpainted areas with a block plane, chamfering those edges and adding a nice sharp line between those areas. After a little more sanding on the front edges off camera, I could move on to adding a clear coat to the rest of the pieces, and I used Total Boat's new Halcyon Clear Matte finish on this project. And I've used their gloss version on a bunch of projects in the past, and this matte version looked great with a super flat finish sheen. Once the clear coat had dried, I could move on to getting all the hardware added to the cabinets, starting with these leveling feet from Rockler. And the CNC had actually already cut the holes for these in the bottom of the base cabinets, but I needed to enlarge the holes slightly to work with these particular feet. After drilling out the holes, I pre-drilled holes for the mounting screws, and then drove in the screws to secure the base to the underside of the cabinets. Once that was done, the other half of the feet just friction fit onto the mounting base. And the cool thing about these leveling feet, apart from the fact that they make leveling the base cabinet super simple, are these little clips which allow you to easily add and remove the toe kick. And these clips friction fit into a groove on the back side of the toe kick pieces, and next I needed to cut that groove over the table saw. And I really tried to sneak up on the fit here, but unfortunately still ended up with a looser fit than I wanted, but that was easy enough to fix with a little CA glue when it came time to add the toe kick. As you can see, once the clips are added, the toe kick just clips into place, and the clips have a ton of adjustability built in, so placement is really easy. Next, I could get these Bloom undermount drawer slides installed, and as I mentioned, the mounting holes for the slides were already pre-drilled by the CNC. And this made mounting the slides a total breeze compared to the normal process I have to go through when mounting drawer slides. These 5mm holes work with these Bloom system screws, which have a deeper thread, which allows them to grab really well in melamine or MDF cabinets. And I added three screws for each drawer slide, and they were installed. No jigs needed. I did need to use a few jigs on the drawer boxes, starting with this jig to locate and mount the clips for these undermount drawer slides. And these clips need to be spaced half an inch off the front of the drawer box, and this little shop made jig helped me do this quickly and repeatedly. Next, using this Rockler jig, I drilled the holes on the back of the drawer boxes, which accept a little locating pin that's built into the drawer slides, which keeps the drawer in place securely once it's clipped into place. I then repeated this process on all eight drawers, and then I could get the drawer fronts attached to the drawer boxes. To do this, I centered the drawer fronts in the opening using 8th inch shims, clamped the drawer fronts to the drawer box, pre-drilled some holes from inside the drawer box, and then finally attached the drawer fronts with some 1 inch screws. And these drawer fronts have an eighth inch reveal on all four sides, and I personally love the look of these inset drawer fronts with the drawer stretchers between each drawer. After getting the drawer fronts added to all the drawers, I cut a few pieces of inch and a quarter pine dowel rod, which I'm using for the closet rods, down to size, and then I could load up and get everything moved back to my house for installation. Before installing anything, I had to get everything moved out of the closet and then get the wire shelving removed. And the key to removing these types of clips without damaging your walls is to pry out the little nail which expands the end of the clip in the drywall. And once the nail is removed, the clip can be pulled out of the wall with minimal damage. I removed all the clips and then came back with some spackling to fill all the holes. And I found this little plastic shim actually worked great as a temporary putty knife here. While the spackling dried, I could prep for hanging the upper cabinet by finding the stud locations where the cabinet would be mounted, and luckily I had two studs centered on this wall, and I measured the distance from where the left edge of the cabinet would be mounted to the stud locations. I then transferred this measurement to the back side of the cabinet and then pre-drilled holes through the cabinet. 
Finally, I partially drove in some 3 inch screws, which I use for mounting the cabinets. To assist in mounting the cabinets, I used these Rockler work supports, which I was able to roughly set to the height I'd be mounting the cabinet, which was 51 inches in this case, and then I could set the cabinet on top of the supports to free up my hands to make any fine adjustments. And these work supports were a real lifesaver, and I can see them really coming in handy on future cabinetry projects. <laughs> I got pretty lucky here and the cabinet was perfectly level on the work supports, so all I needed to do was shift the cabinet slightly to center it on the wall, and then I could drive in the screws, which I knew would hit the studs behind the cabinet. With that, the upper cabinet was mounted, so I could move on to mounting the base cabinet. I started by setting up my line laser to be even with the edge of the upper cabinet so that I could transfer that location to the baseboard below. And I needed to cut away the baseboard in this area, so I marked a line using a level as a straight edge. I marked another line 24 inches from my first line, again using the level to make sure it was straight and plumb, and then I cut through the baseboard at those locations using an oscillating multi-tool. Before prying off the baseboard, I scored the caulk line between the baseboard and the wall to avoid tearing the drywall paper, and then I used this super handy trim puller tool to remove the section of baseboard, as well as to pry out the finished nails that were left behind. After removing the baseboard, I double checked the stud locations were consistent with where they were higher on the wall, then transferred those locations to the back side of the base cabinet and pre-drilled holes in those locations. Next, I slid the base cabinet into place, leveled it using the leveling feet I had added previously, clipped the toe kick in place, and then finally screwed the cabinet to the wall. After that, I could reinstall the drawers and the base cabinet was done. Next, I could work on installing the shelves and closet rod on either side of the cabinets. And I went with these metal shelf brackets here as they were barely more expensive than plastic closet rod sockets, and they gave me an option for adding more shelving, which is always nice. To install the brackets, I first set up my line laser at the height of the bottommost mounting location on the brackets, and then screwed the left bracket onto the wall, hitting the corner stud behind the drywall. Unfortunately, the right bracket didn't have a stud anywhere near where I wanted to mount it, so I instead went with toggle bolts here. To install the toggle bolts, I first drilled a half inch clearance hole and then pushed them into the wall. And these toggle bolts had a ratcheting mechanism which held them in place while I added the brackets, which was definitely a very nice touch. Finally, I bolted on the shelf bracket using the bolts included with the toggle bolt hardware, and then I could add the shelf and closet rod. I spaced the shelf about a quarter of an inch off the side of the upper cabinet and attached it to the brackets from below using some three quarter inch screws. I also used the same screws to mount the inch and a quarter dowel rod I used for the closet rod. I repeated the process for the other three shelves and closet rod, and then all that was left was a little bit of cleanup, some touch up paint, and some staging, and I could call this project complete. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I am really, really happy with the way this whole thing came together. Obviously it's added a ton of functionality to this closet, but I also think it looks really cool and is super fitting for a kid's room. Big thanks again to AMD for sponsoring this project. If you wanna learn more about that AMD powered laptop I used throughout this build, check out links to that down in the video description. And last, while you're here, why not go ahead and get subscribed, ring that little notification bell, and check out another video of mine that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. All right, thanks for watching everybody, and until next week, happy building.